Cyberpunk 2077. They were going on and on about how they'd create this vast open world with a branching storyline. The feeling of, of being there, of walking the streets of the future, is really going to be breathtaking. Can't deny it, it's all true. But everybody still wants to live here. It's been a decade since we first witnessed the mind-blowing trailer that shook the gaming community, teasing us with a vision of a dystopian open world like never before. It was our first glimpse into the universe of Cyberpunk 2077. However, it fell short of expectations upon release. If your only option right now is to play Cyberpunk 2077 on either of the base platforms, I highly suggest you don't play at all until its many terrible performance issues are fixed. Fast forward to today, and we've witnessed quite the turnaround over the past three years. Phantom Liberty marks a new chapter for Cyberpunk 2077, and it's finally close to what I'd hoped it would be when I first sat down to play three years ago. So in this video, we're diving deep into the complete journey of how Cyberpunk 2077 saved itself from the brink of failure. To understand that, let's go back to where it all began in 2012 when the seeds were first planted. But before we delve into the redemption arc, let's first talk about the studio behind Cyberpunk. CD Projekt Red was founded in 2002 and is based in Poland. Over the years, the company made a name for itself in the gaming world with its critically acclaimed Witcher series. The Witcher series earned CD Projekt Red a dedicated fan base and widespread recognition for its storytelling prowess and commitment to delivering rich, immersive RPG experiences. So, when CD Projekt Red announced that they were working on a cyberpunk game at the summer conference in 2012, the ambitious RPG set in the corrupt and tech-advanced world was revealed to be in development in association with the cyberpunk pen and paper system author Mike Pondsmith. This was the first time he trusted a game developer with his IP, and in October, the title of the game was released to the world. The gaming community was already excited. The studio's track record with The Witcher series had set high expectations for their next ambitious project, and after three months, CD Projekt Red released Cyberpunk 2077's first cinematic trailer in 2013. Although the preview was not gameplay footage, it still gave players an idea of what the project was all about. In the trailer, CD Projekt Red showcased Cyberpunk 2077's futuristic setting, as well as the game's mature themes and deeply customizable experience, all set in the corrupt open world. As expected, the first trailer did not elaborate on the game's plot, but it did give players a preview of what to expect in the upcoming game. But true excitement started to build in 2015, when CD Projekt Red released arguably the biggest RPG ever, The Witcher 3, which exceeded all expectations. It was a game that reshaped the industry landscape, catapulting CD Projekt Red's stocks to new heights. This period coincided with the rise of microtransactions in gaming, with DLCs becoming a common practice. The Witcher fans were taken aback by the studio's generosity, receiving over 16 free DLCs, ranging from quality of life improvements to additional storylines and quests. They also introduced two paid expansions, one of which felt like a full-fledged sequel, all for just $20. The studio gained immense goodwill and was firmly in the spotlight, while a smaller team of around 50 people had already begun working on Cyberpunk during the final expansion of The Witcher. CD Projekt Red transferred the entire team to fully dedicate themselves to the development of their next game. In 2016, Studios Head took over as the game director for Cyberpunk 2077 and made significant changes to the core gameplay. The most notable change was transitioning from a third-person perspective to first-person, a decision that stood out in the open-world gaming genre, where many players enjoyed seeing their character's gear and style. The Cyberpunk genre emphasizes fashion and style points, making this shift rather unusual. Opinions on this change varied, with some fans embracing it while others found it strange. These alterations in gameplay direction led to internal disagreements within the development team, causing some developers to quit midway through the game's development. As a result, CD Projekt Red became relatively silent regarding the game's progress, opting to keep information under wraps until it was ready to be revealed to the public. Initially, the company revealed only a few key insights about the game's direction, confirming that it would be a single-player story with character customization. The development approach was expected to follow The Witcher's model, with a promise of free DLCs and two-story expansions. However, when former employees shared their experiences and reviews, it became clear that they had faced challenges within the company. CD Projekt Red was criticized for poor upper management, low compensation, and difficulties in obtaining promotions. In response, the company issued a statement expressing its frustration with these allegations, but affirmed that the game's progress was the most important aspect. Additionally, we received news that CD Projekt Red had secured $7 million in government funding for research, presumably for Cyberpunk 20 
2077, the Polish government had awarded the largest share of a research grant to CD Projekt Red. It was known that the company had applied for these grants as early as September, and it appeared that everything had been approved. CD Projekt Red submitted four proposals, apparently on behalf of Cyberpunk 2077 for seamless multiplayer, city creation, cinematic feel, and animation excellence. After five years of complete silence, CD Projekt Red finally released its second official trailer at E3 2018. Unlike the debut preview, the E3 2018 trailer did reveal a few details about how the story will unfold, how long it will last, and how the dialogue system works in the game. In the preview, fans were introduced to V, the story's main protagonist and the playable character that players will control in Cyberpunk 2077. Night City was described as the most violent, dangerous metropolis of the corporate-ruled future. CD Projekt Red further revealed a 48-minute gameplay demo at E3 2018. To its credit, a significant amount of the missions revealed in this gameplay demo closely resembled the content within the game. However, as is customary with many E3 demonstrations, the showcased quality exceeded that of the actual gameplay, fueling anticipatory hype. It is worth mentioning that while this trailer openly acknowledged its status as a work in progress and advised viewers to lower their expectations, it simultaneously promised an unprecedented degree of player freedom. This caused significant enthusiasm in the gaming community. In a press release, Adam Badowski, the game director, stressed, although this is probably not the same game you'll see on your screen when we launch. They were concerned about potential misconceptions and controversy, given their past experiences with The Witcher 3. Consequently, the developers were under pressure to live up to the immense expectations set by this promotional campaign. Notably, the driving mechanics in the demo received criticism, as it was less sophisticated compared to titles like Grand Theft Auto V. In some cases, it appeared that the development team was dedicating a significant amount of time to overwhelming the dystopian world at events rather than focusing on the essential task of crafting an exceptional game. A year later, CD Projekt Red returned to E3 in 2019, with a big reveal that actor Keanu Reeves would play a major role in Cyberpunk 2077. His appearance surprised the video game industry when he took the E3 stage to discuss the upcoming game, instantly becoming a fan favorite. You're, <laughs> You're breathtaking! This trailer was widely viewed and became one of the most popular previews of the game. However, some fans criticized the trailer for revealing important story details before the game was even released, which left them feeling unhappy. The event also featured the announcement of the game's release date. However, as the year progressed, CD Projekt Red discussed plans for a post-launch multiplayer mode, indicating their ongoing commitment to expanding the game's features beyond its initial release. Inside CD Projekt Red, it was a very different story. Developers were increasingly concerned with some of the grand promises being made by management on the promotional marketing tour. Far into the game's development, former employees said, the hyper-customizable and endlessly explorable world being sold to players was nowhere close to manifesting. Fans were looking forward to playing the game in 2020 and enjoying the world of cyberpunk. Then, in March, the coronavirus pandemic caused CD Projekt Red to send its workforce home, due to which they delayed the game for the first time to September 17, 2020, and this was a big delay. Though the company said remote work would not hurt Cyberpunk's chances of a September release. They said they needed more time because the game is very big and they want it to be just right. So, even though the game was almost finished and could be played, there was still some work left to do. In response to the delay, CD Projekt Red assured fans that they would receive regular updates on the game's progress. This commitment aimed to keep players informed about the development status. However, as they extended the release timeline, it was also announced that the Cyberpunk 2077 development team would be working longer hours. This period period of extended work, commonly known in the industry as crunch, has been a central topic in the ongoing debate regarding unionization within the game industry. According to the New York Times, CD Projekt Red workers left reviews on Glassdoor where one former employee mentioned, the owners treat the company as a machine to earn money and do not see employees as people, but more like data in the table. The delay brought the release date closer to the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 launch. Despite this, CD Projekt Red confirmed that they had no plans to create next-gen console versions of Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk 2077 at that time, and then another delay to November 19th. The September date initially provided CD Projekt Red with more time, but the studio needed just a bit more. They reassured fans that there wouldn't be any more delays. In early October 2020, 
CD Projekt Red made an announcement that brought some relief to eager fans. The game had gone gold. This industry term signified that the game had reached a stage of finalization, preparing it for the certification process for consoles and initiating the disc printing for retail distribution. However, it's a common practice in the gaming industry to continue working on a game even after it has gone gold, usually for the inclusion of a day zero patch to address any last minute bugs. Nonetheless, the gone gold status combined with CDPR's prior statement seemed to solidify the November release date, extinguishing concerns of further delays. But there was one more twist. Studio later announced yet another delay, revealing that the Day Zero patch was taking longer than anticipated to finalize. This time, the extension was 21 days, pushing the release to December 10, 2020. By this point, the repeated delays had become a running joke, with even Mr. Beast joining in, reflecting the shared frustration surrounding the game's release schedule. With this new date, it seemed that the release date for Cyberpunk 2077 was finally set in stone. However, even when December arrived, CD Projekt Red's work on Cyberpunk was far from finished. They had outlined extensive post-launch plans, including free content updates and the development of native PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X versions, slated for 2021. They did remind players that the current version would be playable via backward compatibility. Five months before the actual game release, some reviewers got a chance to play the game. Many reviews from various outlets and YouTubers started coming in which were rather positive across the board. So much. There is so much to do. <laughs> I was absolutely blown away with the experience. I had my doubts given the trailer and how good it looked. Uh, they have delivered. Everyone agrees that Cyberpunk 2077 so far is living up to the hype. However, some reviewers did point out the game's bugs and suggested it might not yet be ready to play, but they faced criticism in the comments. However, as they began to assess the game, it became apparent that guidelines for reviewing Cyberpunk 2077 were more restrictive than initially thought, with reviewers being restricted from using their gameplay footage and instead having to rely solely on the B-roll provided by developer CD Projekt Red. Not allowed to show you my own gameplay footage, I can only use footage provided by CD Projekt Red. CD Projekt Red wouldn't allow us to use our own recorded gameplay for this review. Nope. Uh, we have our official video review coming with our own footage uh, as soon as we are able to. While guidelines about what reviewers can and can't say are quite standard to avoid spoilers, this raised eyebrows given the numerous reports of bugs and issues plaguing the game. All the early reviews were based on the game's PC build, leaving questions about the state of the console versions. Cyberpunk 2077, one of the most anticipated games, finally launched with over 8 million estimated pre-orders, a remarkable accomplishment compared to The Witcher 3's 1 million. It even set a new record with over a million concurrent players on launch day, surpassing Fallout 4's previous record. The game's arrival also boosted Twitch viewership, amassing 1 million viewers, making it the most watched title on the platform. But here's where the story takes a turn for the worse. Despite all the excitement, the game turned out to be a major letdown. Even though it got a good score of 90 from critics on PC, there were big issues, especially on lower-end PCs and older consoles like the Xbox One and PS4. On those consoles, players gave it really low scores, 2.8 and 3.7, and even on PC, the score was a mere 6.0 far below what the critics said. People all over the internet started talking about how buggy and broken the game was. It was clear that the promises made about it working well on both current and next-gen consoles were just those promises, and the gameplay trailer about PS4 was just a big lie. When it first came out, it was almost unplayable. To make things worse, a bunch of features that they talked about before the launch were missing. Things like car chases, third-person cutscenes, customizing your character, decorating your apartment, a dynamic weather system, and a detailed character creator were nowhere to be found. It was like they rushed to release the game and just cut out all these things. And that's when people started looking back at 2018's E3 gameplay. The stuff in that video wasn't actually in the game. People who had actually played the game and then watched that video could easily spot all the things missing. What they called work-in-progress gameplay was more like a big illusion. It was like they took the game's engine, some stuff that wasn't finished, and put it all together to make it look like gameplay, even though it wasn't. They put a lot of work into it, but it was just a big lie. Fans also started comparing Cyberpunk to games from 2002. Cyberpunk underdelivered in ways that games from two decades ago did not. 
basic features like explosions, realistic ragdoll effects, real-time shadows, and even the water in the game did not react to bullets or explosions. Due to this messy launch, CD Projekt shares fell more than 8% on the day of the launch alone. Cyberpunk 2077's launch became one of the most infamous in gaming history, a symbol of what can go wrong with too much hype and a rush to release. The single-player game industry has seen too many instances where games are released unfinished, leaving players to return years later for a complete experience. Within days, CD Projekt addressed these problems, issuing apologies and admitting they had disregarded warnings about the need for more development time on last-gen consoles. Criticism also extended to the game's reactivity and various graphical issues. CD Projekt released four hotfixes before the end of the year, repairing broken save games, stopping crashes, and fixing many, many quest issues. On December 17th, the Japanese firm decided to remove Cyberpunk from its PlayStation Store, triggering a further slump in CD Projekt shares, while the owner of Xbox offered full refunds to anyone who purchased Cyberpunk digitally from the Microsoft Store. On December 27th, CD Projekt's American shareholders filed a class action lawsuit against the company, demanding the court determine whether CD Projekt actions related to Cyberpunk's release had violated federal regulations by misleading investors and thus leading to losses on their side. Shareholders successfully won the case against the company, resulting in CD Projekt being ordered to pay $1.9 million in compensation to the claimants. One month after the game's release, CD Projekt's co-founder addressed the situation in a video released on January 13th, in which he provided a personal account of the events leading up to the launch of Cyberpunk 2077 and shared the studio's viewpoint on the issues that had arisen on older generation gaming consoles. The co-founder expressed deep regret for the unexpected problems, emphasizing, we never, ever intended for anything like this to happen. He promised a commitment to regain the player's trust, assuring that every effort would be made to fix the situation. Although, believe me, we never, ever intended for anything like this to happen. I assure you that we'll do our best to regain your trust. In February CD Projekt, Red experienced a significant breach. Hacker targeted the company, threatening to expose the source code of the games, such as Cyberpunk 2077, The Witcher 3, and Gwent, alongside various internal documents. The hacker's message included warnings about degrading the company's public image. Despite the threat, CD Projekt refused to negotiate. Subsequently, on February 10th, the hacking group began leaking the source code, initially starting with Gwent, and CD Projekt responded by issuing DMCA takedowns. This breach had a profound impact, and on February 24th, the company announced a delay in the release of its upcoming Big Patch 1.2 for Cyberpunk 2077, citing the hacking incident and its impact on the update's overall scope. On March 29th, the much-anticipated Patch 1.2 was released, aimed at addressing the numerous bugs and issues that had plagued the game since its launch, similar to the hotfixes in December and January. This substantial update addressed nearly 500 problems and brought several enhancements. For PC users, it introduced ray tracing support for AMD hardware, as well as the inclusion of customizable key bindings for previously locked actions. Notably, it expanded the spawn radius for the police, an attempt to alleviate the widely criticized issue of teleporting law enforcement officers. Furthermore, the update included significant vehicle improvements, introducing a steering sensitivity option and a mechanism to free stuck vehicles by rocking them back and forth. However, on March 30th, CD Projekt Red shared an unexpected announcement, revealing that the previously proposed development of a multiplayer cyberpunk game had been abandoned, marking a significant shift in the company's strategic direction. Despite the much-anticipated patch 1.2's release just a few days earlier, the game still faced significant issues, leading to recommendations that players should continue to hold off on playing it. The patch, aimed at fixing numerous bugs and issues, did not seem to have fully resolved the game's problems, with players still experiencing issues like sudden teleports and floating NPCs. Meanwhile, in April, Cyberpunk 2077 was nominated for RPG of the Year at the DICE Awards, but ultimately lost to Final Fantasy VII Remake. In June 2021, after a six-month absence, Cyberpunk 2077 returned to the PlayStation Store on June 21st, becoming the best-selling PS4 game of the month, despite Sony's recommendation to play on PS4 Pro or PS5 systems for the best experience. Moving on to August, Patch 1.3 was released, accompanied by three free DLCs, which included cosmetic items, perk points fixes, enhanced database links for more information on the game's world, and several bug fixes. February 2022 brought a substantial update, as CD Projekt Red launched Patch 1.5 alongside free DLC and the next-gen update for console players. With this patch game underwent a transformation that many believed brought it to the state it should have been at launch. This update introduced 
introduced several key game mechanics, such as the much-needed ability to vault, improved handling for vehicles, and a feature allowing players to customize and purchase new apartments in the game world. Notably, a performance mode was added to enhance the experience on next-gen consoles. However, it was disappointing to note that the game remained unplayable on the PS4. The patch also opened the door to character customization through in-game mirrors, added more weapons and attachments, and significantly enhanced the photo mode, which was a welcome addition for many players. On September 6th, CD Projekt announced Phantom Liberty, coinciding with the release of the Edge Runners patch, 1.6. This update brought a transmog wardrobe, cross-platform progression, Edge Runners anime Easter eggs, modding tools, and hinted at a future cop system and vehicle combat overhaul, which could take another year. With patch 1.6, an announcement was made regarding a significant change. It was disclosed that players using last-generation consoles would not have access to Phantom Liberty or the final patch. While this may come as a disappointment to some, it's essential to recognize the inherent challenges in developing and maintaining games across both older and newer console generations. Nonetheless, the commitment to enhancing the game experience remains evident. For those who cannot yet transition to a PS5, the developers have remained true to their promise and introduced substantial improvements. Additionally, the incorporation of cross-save functionality allows for a seamless transition when an upgrade becomes possible, particularly following the inclusion of additional bug fixes and general enhancements in subsequent patches. Cyberpunk 2077 got its first major success in September after the release of Cyberpunk Edge Runners on Netflix. This marked a significant turning point in the game's history, pushing the daily player count to an impressive 1 million. It achieved not only popularity, but a resounding success. Edge Runners presented a more focused narrative set within the expansive city featured in the game, all expertly crafted by Studio Trigger. Remarkably, it captured the attention of both long-standing enthusiasts and newcomers to the cyberpunk universe. The impact of the show was noticeable, and it effectively drew players to re-engage with the game. Edge Runners demonstrated remarkable attention to detail, faithfully reimagining the city while incorporating familiar in-game locations. The series stood as a testament to the unified relationship between the show and the game, reigniting the desire among fans to revisit the game's immersive world. The success of the show was not merely a blessing for fans, it also significantly contributed to an increase in player numbers, solidifying its status as an exemplary instance of cross-media storytelling. Here's to anticipating more enriching experiences of this nature in the future. Cyberpunk 2077 reached 20 million sales, fueled by the 1.6 patch and Edge Runner's popularity, with anime-themed mods reigning on Nexus mods. CD Projekt reported a financial milestone on November 28th, announcing its most profitable Q3 ever. The CFO attributed this success to the anime series and the positive reception of the Edge Runners update. Cyberpunk made waves at the Game Awards on December 8th, as they announced that Idris Elba would be playing a major role in the Phantom Liberty expansion with Keanu Reeves. Cyberpunk 2077 achieved victory by winning Steam's Labor of Love Award. When CD Projekt announced on June 11th that the Phantom Liberty expansion would be released in September, the company's shares gained nearly 24% over the next three days. In September, Phantom Liberty received universal acclaim, with an 87% rating, being called an extra-refined bite of Cyberpunk 2077. Meanwhile, on September 21st, CD Projekt released a free update 2.0. In the following weekend, the number of players simultaneously playing the game on Steam reached 169,711. CD Projekt Red deliberately held back major gameplay changes until September 26th, coinciding with the official release date of Phantom Liberty. In conjunction with the paid expansion, they also introduced Patch 2.0 to the base game, making it a significant improvement in its own right, a move that occurred just before the expansion's launch on the 21st. This strategic timing ensures that even players who have not upgraded to a new console can still experience the gameplay enhancements from the DLC, which included an extensive RPG systems overhaul. The expansion further enriches the gameplay experience with the introduction of Edge Runner characters and an overhauled cyberware system. This expansion adds exciting elements such as car combat and chases, along with a novel police system that aligns more closely with the dynamic scene in Grand Theft Auto, five such as police vehicles now follows you instead of spawning nearby. Furthermore, a community radio station was introduced, housing fan-made songs that contribute to the game's immersive atmosphere. For those who purchase the DLC, a completely new district is seamlessly integrated into the game, enhancing the richness of the in-game world. The expansion also allows interaction with a character named Solomon Reed played by Idris Elba, delivering a comprehensive storyline that provides players with additional choices for the game's ending. 
dynamic events were thoughtfully added to the game world, and players can now enjoy vehicles equipped with mounted weaponry, offering a refreshing dimension to gameplay. Moreover, a new skill tree was introduced, complemented by an increase in the level cap, constituting a substantial gameplay upgrade. Cyberpunk 2077 has achieved a remarkable milestone, clearing 25 million sales, as announced by CEO Adam Kaczynski during a recent investor presentation. He highlighted the significant pace of sales, surpassing even the highly acclaimed Witcher 3, which took 4.5 years to achieve a similar level of success. This achievement speaks volumes about the game's enduring appeal and the continued interest of the gaming community. Additionally, Chief Financial Officer Piotr revealed that the game's latest expansion, Phantom Liberty, experienced remarkable success, selling 3 million copies within its first week of release between September 26th and October 3rd. Despite the challenges it faced during its initial release, Cyberpunk 2077 has come a long way. At present, a substantial 81% of the 589,000 user reviews for the game are overwhelmingly positive, signifying the significant strides it has made since its rough debut. In a recent investor call, CD Projekt Red shared significant insights into the future of the Cyberpunk franchise and their game development approach. They emphasized their commitment to handcrafted content believing that technological tools should enhance rather than replace the creative work of their designers. Despite previous regrets regarding the absence of a third-person perspective, CD Projekt Red remained steadfast in their commitment to first-person gameplay. The call revealed that a cyberpunk sequel, Orion, is in development, and it will leverage the talents of key team members. CD Projekt Red has set its sights on becoming a pop culture powerhouse, expanding beyond video games into music, books, games, and films, with the cyberpunk franchise at the forefront. In addition to the sequel, CD Projekt Red has partnered with Anonymous Content to develop a live-action project set in the cyberpunk 2077 world, hinting at possible TV series or movies. They've also achieved the milestone of selling 100 million copies of their games, further solidifying their place in the gaming industry. These recent developments show that the future of the cyberpunk franchise is bright, with expansion into different media and ongoing game development, making CD Projekt Red a prominent figure in the entertainment industry. I found the storyline to be quite compelling, and the numerous upgrades added to the game have unquestionably made it a worthwhile investment. However, is this the game we were originally promised back in 2018? Regrettably, the answer is no. While I hold great affection for the game, it remains a source of disappointment that we didn't receive the version showcased in the 2018 demo. This vision included a more elaborate character creator, engaging third-person cutscenes, and a game world where choices held significant weight. The absence of these features, like the promised metro system, flying cars, branching dialogue, and detailed NPC lifestyles, remains a letdown. Nonetheless, the post-launch improvements have turned Cyberpunk 2077 into a standout title that easily ranks among the industry's finest. The game's undeniable visuals and compelling storyline were apparent right from the start, and the recent expansion has only made it more rewarding. This, in many ways, signifies the redemption arc of Cyberpunk, how it began as a complete failure and has now become one of the most played games on Steam, rightfully earning its place among the best games available. It's important to acknowledge that, while it may not be entirely free of bugs, and the remaining issues are not of the magnitude that plagued its initial release. As for the future of CD Projekt Red, it's a matter of personal judgment. Whether they've mended their ways and earned back your trust and financial support is a decision only you can make. While I remain an admirer of the company's storytelling prowess and firmly believe they've delivered on that front, they still have much to prove. I hope that they've learned from the past. It's also a pity that the exceptional talent behind this game couldn't release it in its originally envisioned state, but that's a common narrative in modern gaming. In conclusion, I won't discourage you from pre-ordering, that's your prerogative, but I strongly encourage conducting thorough research beforehand. This concludes the overview of Cyberpunk's tumultuous journey. If you found this video enjoyable, a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. For more content like this, consider subscribing for future videos. That's all for now, see you in the next one. So go ahead and play. Just don't forget, the game is fixed.